everybody! Welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at tension in this deep dive episode. Don't forget, if you want to skip the manual and jump straight to the examples, timestamp should be here. So if you guys are ready, let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's jump right in and see what they've got to say about tension. Tension is a synthesizer dedicated to the emulation of string instruments and developed in collaboration with applied acoustic systems. The synthesizer is entirely based on physical modeling technology and uses no sampling or wavetables. Instead, it produces sound by solving mathematical equations that model the different components in string instruments and how they interact. This elaborate synthesis engine responds dynamically to the control signals it receives while you play thereby reproducing the richness and responsiveness of real string instruments. Tension features four types of excitators, two types of hammer, a pick and a bow, an accurate model of a string, a model of a fret finger interaction and damper model, and different types of sound boards. The combination of these different elements allows for the reproduction of a wide range of string instruments. Tension is also equipped with filters, LFOs and envelope parameters that extend the sound sculpting possibilities beyond what would be possible with real-world instruments. Finally, Tension offers a wide range of performance features including keyboard modes, portamento, vibrato and legato functions. Architecture and interface. It's the vibration from the string which constitutes the main sound production mechanism of the instrument. The string is set into motion by the action of the excitator, which can be a hammer, a pick or a bow. The frequency of the oscillation is determined by the effective length of the string, which is controlled by the finger fret interaction or termination. A damper can be applied to the string in order to reduce the decay time of the oscillation. This is the case on a piano, for example, when felt is applied to the strings by releasing the keys and sustain pedal. The vibration from the string is then transmitted to the body of the instrument, which can radiate sound efficiently. In some instruments, the string vibration is transmitted directly to the body through the bridge. In other instruments, such as an electric guitar, a pickup is used to transmit the string vibration to an amplifier. In addition to these main sections, a filter section has been included between the strings and body sections in order to expand the sonic possibilities of the instrument. The tension interface is divided into two main tabs, which are further divided into sections. The string tab contains all of the fundamental sound producing components related to the string itself. Excitator, string, damper, termination, pickup and body. The filter global tab contains the filter section as well as controls for global performance parameters. Each section, with the exception of string and the global keyboard section, can be enabled or disabled independently. Turning off a section reduces CPU usage. The string tab contains the parameters related to the physical properties of the string itself, as well as the way in which it's played. The modelled string can be played using different types of excitators in order to reproduce different types of instruments and playing techniques. The excitator is selected using the type chooser and the choices available are bow, hammer, hammer bouncing and plectrum. Bow. This excitator is associated with bowed instruments such as the violin, viola or cello. The bow sets the string in sustained oscillation. The motion of the bow hair across the string creates friction causing the string to alternate between sticking to the hair and breaking free. The frequency of this alternation between sticking and slipping determines the fundamental pitch. The force knob adjusts the amount of pressure being applied to the string by the bow. The sound becomes more scratchy as you increase this value. The friction between the bow and the string can be adjusted with the friction control. Higher values usually result in a faster attack. Velocity adjusts the speed of the bow across the string. Finally, the velocity and key sliders below these three controls allow you to modulate their behaviour based on the note velocity or pitch, respectively. Hammer and hammer bouncing. These two excitator types simulate the behaviour of soft hammers or mallets. Hammer models a hammer that's located below the strings and strikes it once before falling away. This type of mechanism is found in a piano, for example. Hammer bouncing models a hammer that is located above the string and is dropped onto it, meaning that it can bounce on the string multiple times. This playing mode can be found on the hammer dulcimer, for example. The mass and stiffness of the hammer are adjusted with the surprise mass and stiffness knobs, while velocity controls the speed at which the hammer is struck against the string. As with the bow excitator, these three parameters can be further modulated by note velocity and pitch by adjusting the velocity and key sliders. The behavior of the hammer is further controlled by the damping knob. 
which adjusts how much of the hammer's impact force is absorbed back into the hammer. It's somewhat analogous to the stiffness parameter, but instead of controlling the stiffness of the hammer's surface, it adjusts the stiffness of the virtual spring that connects the hammer to the mass that powers it. As you increase the damping amount, the interaction between the hammer and string will become shorter, generally resulting in a louder, brighter sound. Plectrum. A plectrum, or pick, is associated with instruments such as guitars and harpsichords. It can be thought of as an angled object placed under the string that snaps the string into motion. The protrusion knob adjusts how much of the plectrum's surface area is placed under the string. Lower values result in a thinner, smaller sound as there is less mass setting the string into motion. The stiffness, velocity and damping knobs behave similarly to the hammer mode. Protrusion, stiffness, velocity and position can be modulated by velocity or note pitch via the velocity and key sliders. The position knob is applicable to each extractor model and specifies the point on the string where the excitator makes contact. At 0%, the excitator contacts the string at its termination point, while at 50%, it activates the string at its midpoint. The behavior is a bit different if the fixed position switch is enabled. However, in this case, the contact point is fixed to a single location rather than changing as the length of the string changes. This behavior is similar to that of a guitar, where the picking position is always basically the same regardless of the notes being played. On a piano, the excitator position is relative. The hammers normally strike the string at about a seventh of their length, and so it's best modeled with fixed position turned off. The excitator's position can additionally be modulated by velocity or note pitch via the velocity key sliders. The excitator section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. With it off, the string can only be activated by interaction with its damper. If both the exciter and damper sections are disabled, nothing can set the string in motion. If you find that you're not producing any sound, check to see that at least one of these sections is on. Please note that the excitator section parameters work closely together to influence the overall behavior of the instrument. You may find that certain combinations of settings result in no sound at all, for example. The string section. The vibration of the string is the main component of a stringed instrument sound. The effective length of the string is also responsible for the pitch of the sound we hear. The theoretical model of a resonating string is harmonic, meaning that the string's partials are all exact multiples of the fundamental frequency. Real-world strings, however, are all more or less inharmonic, and this increases with the width of the string. The inharm slider models this behavior, causing upper partials to become increasingly out of tune as its value increases. The damping slider adjusts the amount of high-frequency content in the string's vibration. Higher values result in more upper partials, less damping. This parameter can be modulated by note pitch via the key slider to its right. The decay slider determines how long it takes for the resonating string to decay to silence. Higher values increase the decay time. The key slider next to the decay allows decay time to be modulated by note pitch. The ratio slider sets the ratio of the decay time of the string's oscillation during note onset and release. At 0%, the time set by the decay slider sets the decay time for both the onset and release of the note. As you increase the ratio, the release time decreases, but the onset decay time stays the same. The vibrato section. The vibrato section uses an LFO to modulate the string's pitch. As with all of tension's parameters, the controls in this section can be used to enhance the realism of a stringed instrument model, or to create something never heard before. The two most important parameters in this section are the rate and amount sliders. Rate adjusts the frequency of the pitch variation, whilst the amount adjusts the intensity, amplitude of the effects. The decay slider sets how long it will take for the vibrato to start after the note begins, while attack sets how long it takes for the vibrato to reach full intensity, as set by the amount knob. The mod slider adjusts how much of the modulation wheel will affect the vibrato intensity. This control is relative to the value set by the amount knob. The error slider introduces unpredictability into the vibrato by introducing random deviation to the rate, amount, delay, and attack parameters. The damper section. All string instruments employ some type of damping mechanism that mutes the resonating string. In pianos, this is a felt pad that's applied to the string when the key is released. In instruments such as guitars and violins, the player damps by stopping the string's vibration with the fingers. Dampers regulate the decay of the string, but also produce some sounds of their own, which is an important characteristic of a string instrument's timbre. Although a damper functions to mute the string rather than activate it, it's somewhat analogous to a hammer and shares some of the same parameters. The mass knob controls how hard the damper's surface will press against the string, 
As you increase the value, the string will mute more quickly. Stiffness of the damper's material is adjusted with the stiffness control. Lower values simulate soft materials such as felt, while higher values model a metal damper. Note that very high mass and stiffness can simulate dampers that connect with the string hard enough to change its effective length, thus causing a change in tuning. The velocity control adjusts the speed with which the damper is applied to the string when the key is released, as well as the speed with which it's lifted from the string when the key is depressed. Be careful with this parameter, as very high velocity values can cause the damper to hit the string extremely hard, which can result in a very loud sound on key release. Note that the state of the gated switch determines whether or not the velocity control is enabled. When the gate switch is turned on, the damper is applied to the string when the key is released. With gated off, the damper always remains on the string, which means that the velocity control has no effect. The mass, stiffness and velocity parameters can be further modulated by note pitch via the sliders below. The stiffness of the damper mechanism is adjusted with the damping knob, which affects the overall amount of vibration absorbed by the damper. The lower values result in less damping, longer decay times, but this becomes a bit less predictable as the damping value goes over 50%. At higher values, the mechanism becomes so stiff that it bounces against the string. This in turn reduces the overall amount of time that the damper is in contact with the string, causing an increase in decay time. The best way to get a sense of how this parameter behaves is to gradually turn up the knob as you repeatedly strike a single key. The position knob serves as an analogous function to the control in the excitator section, but here specifies the point on the string where the damper makes contact. At 0%, the damper contacts the string at its termination point, while at 50%, it damps the string at its midpoint. The behavior is a bit different if the fixed position switch is enabled, however. In this case, the contact point is fixed to a single location rather than changing as the length of the string changes. The damper's position can additionally be modulated by velocity or note pitch via the VEL key sliders. The damper section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. The termination section. The termination section models the interaction between the fret, finger and string. On a physical instrument, this interaction is used to change the effective length of the string, which in turn sets the pitch of the note played. The physical parameter of the finger are adjusted with the fing mass and fing stiff knobs, which set the force the finger applies to the string and the finger's stiffness respectively. The mass amount can additionally be modulated by velocity or note pitch via the sliders. The stiffness of the fret is modulated with the fret stiff parameter. The pickup section. The pickup section models an electromagnetic pickup, similar to the type found in an electric guitar or electric piano. The only control here is the position slider, which functions similarly to the parameter in the excitator and damper sections. At 0%, the pickup is located at the string's termination point, while at 50% it's under the midpoint of the string. Lower values generally result in a brighter, thinner sound, while higher values have more fullness and depth. The pickup section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. The body section. The role of the body or soundboard of a string instrument is to radiate the vibration energy from the strings. The body also filters these vibrations based on its size and shape. In some instruments, such as guitars, the body also includes an air cavity, which boosts low frequencies. The body type chooser allows you to select from different body types modeled after physical instruments. The body size chooser sets the relative size of the resonant body from extra small to extra large. In general, as you increase the body size, the frequency of the resonance will become lower. You can further modify the body's frequency response with the high cut and low cut knobs. The decay time of the body's resonance can be adjusted with the decay knob, Higher values mean a longer decay. The string body knob adjusts the ratio between the string section's direct output and the signal filtered by the body section. When turned all the way to the right, there is no direct output from the string section. When turned all the way to the left, the body section is effectively bypassed. The body section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. The lonely volume knob to the right of this section sets the overall output of the instrument. This knob is replicated on the Filter Global tab. The Filter Global tab contains the filter parameters for the instrument as well as the global controls. Tensions Filter section features a highly configurable multi-mode filter that sits between the string and body sections. In addition, the filter can be modulated by a dedicated envelope generator and low frequency oscillator. The filter chooser allows you to set the filter type. You can choose between second and fourth order low pass, band pass, notch, high pass and formant filters. The resonance frequency of the filter is adjusted with the frequency slider, while the amount of resonance is adjusted with the resonant control. When a formant filter is chosen in the chooser, the res control cycles between vowel sounds. 
The frequency and resonant controls can be modulated by LFO, envelopes, or note pitch via the sliders below. Note that the LFO and envelope sliders have no effect unless the envelope and LFO subsections are enabled. The envelope generator is a standard ADSR. This section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. The attack time is set with the attack knob. This time can also be modulated by velocity via the velocity slider below the knob. As you increase the velocity value, the attack time will become increasingly shorter at higher velocities. The time it takes for the envelope to reach the sustain level after the attack phase is set by the decay knob. The sustain knob sets the level at which the envelope will remain from the end of the decay phase to the release of the key. When this knob is turned all the way to the left, there is no sustain phase. With it turned all the way to the right, there is no decay phase. The sustain level can be additionally modulated by velocity via the velocity slider below the knob. Higher values result in an increased sustain level as the velocity increases. Finally, the release time is set with the release knob. This is the time it takes for the envelope to reach zero after the key is released. The LFO subsection provides an additional modulation source for the filter. This section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. The waveform chooser sets the type of waveform used by the LFO. You can choose between sine, triangle, rectangular, and two types of random waveforms. The first random waveform steps between random values, while the second uses smoother ramps. The delay knob sets how long it will take for the LFO to start after the note begins, while attack sets how long it will take for the oscillator to reach its full amplitude. The LFO speed is set with the rate knob. The switch below the knob toggles the rate between frequency in hertz and tempo synced beat divisions. The entire filter section can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. Global and keyboard parameters. The remaining section contains all of the parameters that adjust how tension responds to MIDI data, as well as controls for performance parameters such as tuning and portamento. The keyboard section contains all of tension's polyphony and tuning parameters. The voice chooser sets the available polyphony, while priority determines which note will be cut off when the maximum polyphony is exceeded. When priority is set too high, new notes that are higher than currently sustained notes will have priority, and notes will be cut off starting from the lowest pitch. Low priority is the opposite. A setting of last gives priority to the most recent played note, cutting off the oldest notes as necessary. The octave, semi and tuning controls function as coarse and fine tuners. Octave transposes the entire instrument by octaves, while semi transposes up or down in semitone increments. The tuning slider adjusts the increments of one cent up to a maximum of 50 cents up or down. The pitch bend modulation range in semitones is set by the P bend slider. Stretch simulates a technique known as stretch tuning, which is a common tuning modification made to electric and acoustic pianos. At 0%, tension will play in equal temperament, which means that two notes are an octave apart when the upper note's fundamental pitch is exactly twice the lower notes. But because the actual resonance behavior of a vibrating tone or string differs from the theoretical model, equal temperament tends to sound wrong on pianos. Increasing the stretch amount raises the pitch of upper notes while lowering the pitch of lower one. This results in a more brilliant sound. Negative values simulate negative stretch tuning. Upper notes become flatter while lower notes become sharper. The error slider increases the amount of random tuning error applied to each note. Try very high values if you'd like to relive your experiences from junior high school orchestra. Oh, no thanks. The unison section allows you to stack multiple voices for each note played. The switch next to the name toggles the section on or off. The voices switch selects between two or four stacked voices, while detune adjusts the amount of tuning variation applied to each stacked voice. Low values can create a subtle chorusing effect, while high values provide another good way to approximate a youth orchestra. Increasing the delay amount adds lag before each stacked voice is activated. The portamento section is used to make the pitch slide between notes rather than changing immediately. The effect can be toggled on or off via the switch next to its name. With legato enabled, the sliding will only occur if the second note is played before the first note is released. Proportional causes the slide time to be proportional to the interval between the notes. Large intervals will slide slower than small intervals. Disabling the switch causes the slide time to be constant regardless of interval. The time slider sets the overall speed of the slide. The volume knob sets the overall output of the instrument. And lastly, we've got a couple of sound design tips. At first glance, Tension's modular architecture may not seem so different from what you're used to in other synthesizers. It consists of functional building blocks that feed information through a signal path. 
and modify it as it goes. But it's important to remember that tensions components are not isolated from one another. What you do to one parameter can have a dramatic effect on a parameter somewhere else. Because of this, it's very easy to find parameter combinations that produce no sound at all. It's also very easy to create extremely loud sounds, so be careful when setting levels. When programming tension, it may help to think about the various sections as if they really are attached to a single physical object. For example, a bow moving at a slow speed could perhaps excite an undamped string, but if the string is constricted by an enormous damper, the bow will need to increase its velocity to have any effect. To get a sense of what's possible, it may help to study how presets were made. You'll soon realise that tension can do far more than just strings. Right, so that's the manual. I must admit, tension is bloody weird. So let's just jump into Ableton and see what we can do with it. All right, guys, here we are back in Ableton. Now, first things first, I have to admit to you, I have never used tension before. I use operator, simpler, sampler, drum rack, wavetable since they added it. Tension is one I have never looked at. So I had to spend a couple of hours properly fiddling around and figuring out what we could do with it after reading the manual. And it's pretty cool, like always. Ableton comes in with all the goods. So I made a few patches here first and I'll run you through the kind of problems I had and we'll have a look at what tension can actually do. Right, so our initial patch sounds like this. A couple of octaves up. And that's quite a nice kind of plonky sound, a good, a good starting point for a pad. You could chuck some delay on there and um, some reverbs and kind of create a thing out of that quite easily. So in the manual, it says to really think about what instrument you're trying to replicate. I think that's kind of a, it's not necessarily just the case. These knobs are all very finickety. The tiniest changes make a big difference down the line. So let's just jump in, twist a bunch of these knobs, and hopefully you can kind of get an idea what's going on. So we'll start with everything off, and we'll just have our excitator on. You can hear that kind of attack at the beginning from our plectrum protruding here. Let's turn it all the way down. And you can hear when it's at 100%, it's like, it's almost like your plectrum's getting stuck in the string. Which might be useful for some of you guys. For me, I'd probably back it off a bit. Let's say 69. 69% looks good to me. It's got some attack, but it's not too late. The stiffness. So you write the way down, it's almost completely destroying your sound. So that's one really you'd probably want to set to velocity. I'm just using my keyboard computer, so I've got no velocity, but when you program that in, or if you're using a MIDI keyboard, the stiffness, depending how hard you're hitting it, would give you this kind of difference. Turn the velocity off. That one's quite nice. And next up's the velocity knob. You can hear that's just kind of changing the formant of the sound a bit. And the positions, that's where it's going to be attacking the string. So again, if you're a guitar player at all and you like you do any pinched harmonics or stuff like that, you can really hear it's it's kind of like the different harmonic overtones you're hitting as uh, as you're playing in a different position. And it's not massively noticeable in the end, but it's definitely things that different players have their own styles of. The one thing I find quite interesting here, if we grab a tuner afterwards, is how quickly this instrument can become out of tune. So here I'm playing a G, and you can see it slowly settles there, but with all of this kind of attack and position differences, trying to balance somewhere that hits straight away is definitely something to keep on top of with tension. It really can go quite badly out of tune quite quick. So lastly, we've got our damping on the plectrum. It's like totally broken, the sounds you can get out of this. So there's something that's kind of interesting. If we were now to change this to bow, it would be madly different. And 
And you can see all of these knobs have changed what they actually are. And the excitator being the way that you're hitting this string is completely different. It's got this real scratchy sound to it. Now for me, this is what I, I, I found I had the most fun in bow mode. Taking it down a couple of octaves. That's the kind of thing I love, that big scratchy bass. And the force here, again, just makes a massive difference depending where this knob is. So all the way down here, we've just got no noise. I'm pressing the button, there is nothing. And then same with friction. If there's loads of friction, the bow's not really moving. Here's such a big difference between the small amounts of movement. Same again, this velocity. You can, just, you can totally lose your sound in a load of places here. And the position of the bow, again, making a massive difference. Let's change this out for hammer. So you can hear just how much of a difference just twisting these knobs in this first section makes. So if you're after a particular sound, I don't necessarily think, unless you can master the tension, you spend a long time with it, you're really gonna know, oh, I want the sound of a hammer with a, a high mass and a, a mild stiffness, um, and I want the position to be near X, Y, Z. And that's what the manual's kind of trying to get you to think. I think realistically, when you guys are using this, it's gonna be a case of just kind of having a few tricks you know about and twisting the knobs. So hammer is quite a nice one that you get that attack on. And bow is a nice one to get that kind of continuous straining. And even though bow worked a minute ago, you can hear it's just broken now. Um, for me, I just love all that kind of broken sound, so I'd be layering a sub under that and call it a day. That's the kind of sound that really excites me in the, in the middle of a track, so it's a big bass thing's going, and then you just have... Um, I love it. Um, I, I don't know if you people are, are more into music, but I'm, I'm not really into music, I'm into horrible noises. Um, so lastly, let's have a look at bouncing. This one was quite fun. If you set things right, you can get some kind of cool um, exponential rhythms going on. So let's have a little look. Kind of hear the hammer going. Doo -ga -doo -ga -doo -ga -doo -ga -doo -ga so straight away, this exciter section is pretty big in what it can do. I'm going to go back to bow. I like this. Let's try and get some notes back out of it. You can see eventually that settles into a G, but the whole beginning of that note is just noise. So let's move on to the damper section again. Again, this is where it just gets a bit stupid because. As you start changing these knobs, it's going to drastically change what's happening beforehand as well. So let's have a little mess around. We're just going to twist them and uh, I'll keep pressing my G note. If you can hear it 100%, that starts to create that kind of big screechy sound. I love that. Let's take the stiffness, let's change the In this case, it's not doing anything, but once we change some more knobs, that stiffness might have more of an effect. It's just shouting, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at this string. Okay, at zero percent, nothing's coming through. A 
Low 20, it's got quite a nice sound. Let's take it right up to the 100. You can hear that tail that's now left by the kind of the string vibrating around. So let's turn that back down. That was somewhere nice around the 20s, 30s. Cool. And then the inharmonic and damping and ratio here, again, making big difference. A lot of distortion happening. You can see Tuner is not even really picking up any notes. Let's have a look at the damping. Let's go up an octave. Quite a nice lot of movement going there because of the way it's emulating the bow and it's kind of got these things going on. Quite like that. Let's have a look at the termination. Now this one I found, again, just really weird. Found it really easy to detune your synths by messing around with these things in the wrong way. not making too much difference in this sound. We've got a sound up here, which I called Banjo-Kazooie. I don't know, it just reminded me of their kind of... Um, it's kind of got that thing. But if we look, I'm going to hit a G note. And it's giving us a flattened E flat. So you do have to be careful, and that's mainly come from this termination. If I turn this off... Now my G is a sharp G. Termination on turns it into a flat E flat. So you do have to be careful. And um, that's why I definitely say use a tuner at the end of this instrument when you're tweaking to kind of understand what, what's going wrong. <laughs> cool, we'll stick with there. And body, let's have a little look. Let's go for guitar, XL. <laughs> So you can hear all that kind of string resonance being uh, brought in, so we can high cut that out. Let's turn this all the way to body, so we're only getting that body sound. Let's try medium. That's quite nice there, and then we'll bring the string body back down. That's just string. Yeah, I can dig with that, that's quite cool. Let's finally jump over to our filter section and let's have a little look at these filters. So, we can start off there, we can turn our envelope on and have the envelope sent to the filter. Same we can do, turn the LFO on, have that doing this if we wanted to. So with the delay in the attack, you can set how long it takes this to come in. Straight away, or we can... Which is quite nice. Um, again, if you wanted to use it in a more authentic way, we could... Uh, have something like this set to random, just have it kind of moving around a bit, we'd have it happening straight away but happen less. Oh that's not doing anything now, 
so we'll probably turn this up a bit. So if we have the envelope on and then a bit of delay on here, so it'll go. So in here it takes a minute to open up and then it starts doing this kind of more randomized movement. That's got a kind of a nice broken sound to it again. So I've gone up a couple of octaves and now we've lastly got this keyboard section. So you see there that my G is about 30, 30 cents up roughly. So we can detune this by 30 minus 30. That's not quite, that's gone to minus 50. Let's go minus 0.4. Minus 0.45. And that's hanging more around where we want it. So let's go down a couple of octaves again. Unison, we can add some more voices and kind of detune them to get some spread. Two voices be a bit cleaner and you don't want to detune them too much. Portamento to give us that slide. If we turn the voices down to mono, it's more easy to hear that. That's really fun to kind of make a, a big build up that kind of starts crackling and breaking at the end. That's really nice. I'll turn this one off for now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can adjust our volume at the end. And there we go. So as always, I'm going to be doing more after tension. It's just the way to go. You can't rely on the instrument itself. We need all of these external effects like you have in... Um, Vital and serum and all that stuff. So let's just do some of this. Let's get a bit of compression. Soft clip. Nice. Always, this is just the trick I do. I have this set up like this. I should probably turn the amount up and have that saved as default preset. And that's just sweeping around that notch just to give us more movement. Um, after that, what should we do? It's got a lot of crackly high, so let's maybe add some overdrive in the 200 range. Go 100% wet. Yeah, add some of that in there. Let's take it right down. Before and after. Really not much difference, but we like it. Let's add a saturator in. Let's try some wave shape in. I do love how broken that sounds, so let's put the uh, dry back in. And let's chuck another glue compressor at the end, just for luck. Multi-band compressor, if you want to actually get into the nitty gritty and have a look, let's grab our span as well. It's always good to check visually what you're actually doing. Let's open up span and have a little look at the frequencies. Uh, 
Um, let's split this. Let's group it. I'm going to have a duplicate and make that one the mid. Duplicate, make that one the low. Might as well mono the lows. There we go. Under key. Right, then monoed. Let's have a look at the next one. Right, happy for now. Right, let's spread these a bit with uh, some chorus or delay. Not corpus, we want chorus. Turn that down a bit and let's also get a delay in there. Super short time. Something like that. crackles to it it's kind of got this fluty sound to it um really fun exciting kind of way to to get that synthesis and like i said personally i won't be using this to try and get an authentic guitar sound or an authentic hammer but the way that it tackles synthesis it's quite interesting to get you not thinking about wavetables waveforms and more thinking about uh pressure force friction just see even by the way they've named these things mass stiffness just another way to get your head around what's actually going on. So let's have a quick look at these other sounds that I've made. And by no means they're good. This is only my first few hours kind of with tension. But um, definitely a lot of potential here. So that's got this nice kind of gargle to it. This formant almost. It's kind of a little bit cheesy. But again, you start chucking some effects on there. That might be useful. There's uh, the Banjo-Kazooie, this that I made. Which I, I quite like, it's really weird and silly, but um, I'd probably use that. <laughs> I'd probably certainly use that in something. Smash it through some compression. Yeah, kind of fun video gamey sound. And then at the top here, here's just another Reese that I've made. Again, using the bow. <laughs> This is definitely a tool I'm going to be using in my sound design. Um, probably resampling out, putting it into sampler, doing more FM on top of it, that kind of thing. All right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about tension. As I say, my main two takeaways. Number one, just twiddle those knobs and see what you can get. Number two, put a tuner after the instrument because twiddling those knobs, you can really change the actual note that's meant to be coming out. So you could be playing a G on your keyboard, but be getting an E flat or a B or a C. So just have that tuner on when you're designing your instrument to make sure that it's going to stay in tune. Also, don't forget, Applied Acoustic Systems are updating all of their instruments for Ableton 11. So hopefully we're going to have another look at this in a couple of months and see what they've updated. As always, project files are available down in the description. So if you want to get your hands on them, follow along the project or just have a look at the patches. Feel free to do that. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these deep dive sessions. Until next time, keep making music. Bye!